Hello, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, my name is Paul. Uh, my name's Anthony. And this is Dexter. I hope you can see him. Well, last week we posted some questions. We asked people if they wanted to give us any questions on Facebook and also we posted it on our Patreon site. And we've had quite a lot of questions, so we've chosen the best ones and we'd like to try and answer those now. It's been two months since we moved on to the narrow boat, and have we made the right choice? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you don't sound so sure. I think there's times when you sort of panic because we did have like a real nice house, we had some real nice stuff, but then I think the whole point of this was because life isn't about material things and about stuff. stuff. Yeah, it's you know about what you do with it and I think that's that's what we need to keep at the main focus. Mm. And it's allowed me to sort of change career really, which has been forced on me but I'm sort of glad that it has been and you're working one day less? Uh, I was always working one day less so it was nothing to do with the boat. Um, I'm hoping to eventually reduce my hours mm. uh, but that'll be next year after I've finished my course. So. To crack on with the questions yeah so from peter m um i'd like to know how you look back at your first month or two on board what surprised you did you miss anything from a regular house and also how accepting is a boating community to newcomers and to gay men peter m um I can't remember what you just said. <laughs> first part of the question. <laughs> uh, looking back at our first two months of board, what surprised us and what did we miss about a regular house? Um, I think I miss, for me, because I like cooking, I like baking, I really miss the electric oven. Mm. I find the colour gas oven really unpredictable mm. and it's took me quite a bit of time to even produce anything edible. Baking wise, um, oh, you're getting there. The why is just getting used to yeah, it. Yeah, I think, and that's it. I think just like I really enjoy, I enjoy baking. Um, it's not the space so much that or lack of space. It's just the unpredictability of the Calagas oven. I think. Yeah, I think what surprised us here is the amount of storage. We gave a lot of stuff to charity shops and um, sold quite a lot of stuff on eBay and Spock, and we could have kept quite a bit of that stuff, couldn't we? Your craft making yeah, things. Yeah, so I, I really I really downsized probably a lot more than you did, to be fair. Mm. Um, and I got rid of a lot of my stuff. So I like um, I like baking, but I also used to do a bit of cake decorating. So I had like an airbrush and um, maybe in the future we can show some of them examples. But mm. um, I got rid of all of that and I sort of regret doing that now. Only because I didn't think we'd have the storage, but mm. we obviously have. Mm. Um, Michael Sheldon has asked, uh, I have a curiosity about the derelict boats that you see on the canals moored up. There seems to be a lot of them. Do the Canal and River Trust ever remove them? Are there, are there rules about this? Well, yeah, if your licence expires, as far as we're aware, they do put a notice on the boat and they do remove those boats if they're unlicensed, but it does take a long, long time, doesn't it? Yeah, because we've seen, we've seen the same derelict boats over and over again, yeah. so I'm not quite sure how long the process is um, to is eventually get them to remove from mm. the canal but I, I, I'm led to believe that they do eventually yeah. take them away but I mean it's at a cost isn't it and there yeah. must be hundreds of boats yeah, just yeah. left derelict. Which is a shame but you know it's the same as derelict houses isn't it you see those and you don't know the story behind them. Yeah really. exactly. Yeah. Um, oh and Michael Sheldon said sorry also wondering if you happen to know if boat builders have seen an increase or a decrease in, or, in orders due to the pandemic, I'd assume most people are looking for ways to simplify or downsize their lives, but perhaps this isn't the case. Well, we know our boat builder has got quite a long waiting list. Yeah, so we were quite lucky, I think, in when we inquired, mm -hmm. because I think it was like a year, wasn't it? Yeah. Or, well, probably just over a year. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's something like a two year wait now. Yeah. And then I was spoke to Sue the other day because they were launching another narrow boat and she said, you know, it's it is very busy and she she sort of thinks that um all the other boat builders are busy as well. And also the second hand market 
because even when we looked at second hand bolts oh, about 18 months ago you'd find something it'd just be snapped up before you even had a chance yeah. to go and view it that's actually echoed on other people's youtube channels as well mm. when you when they've said they were looking at second hand bolts and they just anything half decent is, is snapped up like mm. you know we've we've actually seen something gone to go and view it and then it, before yeah. we'd even left the house yeah been told it's, it's gone oh there's multiple viewers the yeah. same weekend uh, so yeah, good question. Thanks, Michael. So Henrik Ramerson, uh, what considerations did you have regarding starting a YouTube channel and thus inviting strangers into your life? I was probably more reluctant. Um, I think probably people know by now that I'm a little bit more shy on camera. Probably not in real life, but on camera. I don't really like being on camera. Um, I was concerned having spoken to other people and, and heard about other people's with a YouTube channel, that your privacy is um, reduced somewhat, but mm. then that's a product of what you do. So mm. I don't think you can complain that your privacy has been invaded too much because you're mm. actually inviting people into your lives. And, and you know, we, we, we love getting the comments from people um, I really enjoy replying. We see the same names, and it's really nice to see familiar people replying yeah, to the yeah. to the channel. Um, but that was a consideration. I I was more reluctant to do it, which is probably why I don't partake as much. Um, you're busy than me, aren't and, you? Yeah, you're I was work. just going to say, and I, I still work full time hours, so mm. um, where you probably have more time on your hands to do it, and it gives you. It gives you something to do, doesn't it? You enjoy doing it. Yeah, I mean, we, we discussed when we <coughs> first started looking at narrow bolts. We looked at other YouTube channels and thought it might be a great idea to do a YouTube channel ourselves, but we know how much work's involved. And there is also that, you know, you want to enjoy life and not permanently be behind a camera, you know. Uh, but I, I think when lockdown came and all my work stopped, it just, everything seemed to fall into place. I thought, well, why not, you know, as a performer, um, I do like talking to people and we do get that interaction and I think what I didn't expect from YouTube which has been the biggest benefit to us are all the all the comments I don't want to keep saying the lovely comments but they are we do get some really nice comments and from a lot of the same people every week and we get to know these people even if it's not in person and it'd be great to meet a lot of you um, when things yeah, you improve. do. You do feel like you get to know some of the personalities of people. Mm. Um, you know, there's, there's some people that message regularly who, um, for one reason or another, can't leave the house or are, are like isolating, and it must be quite lonely. And it's nice to be able to share mm. and actually communicate with people. Like, you know, yeah. as shy as I'm on camera. I'm actually quite, uh, like quite a sociable person. Yeah, no, you're very outgoing, really. Yeah. So yeah, that that's been the biggest benefit is getting to talk to people and know people, and the comments that we get have been really encouraging. And we on the whole, know, yeah, yeah, we want to continue. Um, so, uh, does living on a narrow boat require specific routines and planning? I'm thinking of the small spaces, shopping, etc. So. I think shopping has not been as much of an issue as I thought mm. because we have to do it twice a week, I'd say, rather than once a week. Yeah, so the, the the number of times we shop has increased mainly because I used to batch cook, we'd freeze stuff, but we've got like a little box freezer. Um, also, the fresh stuff, the fridge isn't as big as it. Mm. So, however, I'm able to go shopping on the way home from work, and I do that quite a lot. So yeah. Um, there's a few supermarkets on the way home, so I just call at them, grab some stuff, and then occasionally we'll do a shop together at the weekend, but I'd say mainly I do most of the shopping now. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is a good one. What do you do to give each other space to be alone when needed? I'd say most of... The... I'm actually quite shocked how well we've got on in a small <laughs> space. Um... And yeah, I you think, just adapt, don't you? I think you just adapt to the space. I think it probably helps because I'm at work all day. Yeah. So we're, we're only together really in the evenings and the weekend, which is how it was in a house anyway. Um, I've never felt like we're tripping over each other. Um, if we set our minds, we want to do something like Paul wants to do some artwork, I want to do some study, 
we'll use the same space so we'll be at either side of the dinette um i don't really think we've ever needed to go off have we and no. get our own space no i think you know there's times when anthony's on the boat and you might want to lie in at the weekend so i'll take the dog for a walk so we are you know we're not permanently glued side by side no. are we um so yeah that's another good question uh three things you couldn't take with you on board Morningstar that you have found you can easily do without. Probably for me, it's all of my books and DVDs and what else. I had a lot of magic stuff. I used to go to all the magic conventions and buy stuff thinking, oh, one day I'll put that on my show. Why ask me and what else if you're <laughs> just going to answer? Well, that, well that, I thought there's three. So that, okay. there's my three. Is, and then you back yourself. <laughs> oh. um, the hot tub. Oh yeah, we had a hot tub <laughs> so in the So we did garden. have a hot tub. Um, and I preferred it in the winter, to be honest, the hot tub. It's nice. Yeah, it was. Um, the bath. Oh, I, I really miss a bath. Mm, I was always showers. Didn't have time for a bath. Um, well, I'm surprised I'm still here because I used to have the bath that hot when I got in and then I used to fall asleep and it'd be freezing cold. But I do miss the bath. Uh, right, yeah, anything my, else? Yeah, my KitchenAid. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that you can do without. Yeah, you can do without. No, no, not my KitchenAid. Your piano? My piano? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like we had a big grand house, we didn't. Um, so I started to learn to play the piano as an adult. I, be, I found I was just getting too busy and unable to practice after a while between each lesson. Um, I could play by ear, I can't read music very well. I can read like treble clef but not bass clef. Um, but I think it became less and less. I just have a go every now and again. Mm. Um, but it has gone to a good home. It's gone to um, my cousin. Paul's cousin. So Yeah, Lindsay. And a little boy, Morgan, is playing it as well, isn't yeah. he? So that's nice. So it's, it's, not, yeah. you know, it's actually yeah. gone somewhere rather than being... I've remembered dumb. something else, if I can... <laughs> um, the home gym. So I used to go to the gym five times a week. And then we had a home gym in what used to be our garage. And I think I can sort of live without that. I'd sort of miss it, but I'm hoping that when we do continually cruise, we'll be getting plenty of exercise, plenty of walks. Yeah. I am I'm, too. I'm hiding my belly. <laughs> it's Sue's fault for making all these cakes and Anthony's. That's the thing, when you're on a narrow boat, we just feel like... We're on holiday. We're on holiday <laughs> when we're on the boat. And... He's so tempted to have a glass of wine or a piece of cake or a homemade cookie. So thanks to all those people that keep sending cakes and things. Um, Paul is quite obviously a very talented artist. Well, thanks, Henrik. Uh, what are Anthony's creative sides? Uh, I, I do like to draw. I'm not anywhere near as good as Paul, so I find it frustrating because I think I'm more of a... I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I don't see the point in doing something unless you're good at it. So but I get really frustrated. You say that, I think he's very good at digital art on the iPad with a Apple mm. Pencil, but... I've also done stuff like when I did that um, Panther yeah. on black paper and chalk. Yeah. I like seeing you do art because I can see you totally engrossed in it, so I know he enjoys it and that's what's important. But then it? I get frustrated at the end result. <laughs> um, I think that's it from Henrik. So they're all our questions from our patrons. We've got a few questions from Facebook as well. So, um, John Hogan. Uh, if you guys are willing to give some background of where you're from in England and where we grew up and education, post high school and how we met. Okay, so... We both grew up on council estates. Yes. I was brought up in Billinge near Wigan in Lancashire and my mum was from Lytham St Anne's and my dad was from Haydock. Um, went to a local primary school, did okay at high school, my favourite subjects were art. Um, well, I went to art college for two years and then I got offered a job at a holiday park. I'm just thinking how long it's going to take you to answer this question. <laughs> um, I got a job at a holiday park uh, as a magician stroke entertainer, blue coat. And absolutely loved it. I did two seasons, made some amazing friends, had some amazing times. And it was a really great training ground. I was fairly quiet 
till I worked at this holiday park and it really brought me out of my shell because you had to talk to so many people and perform on stage for up to a thousand people in the evening. Ah, what about yourself? So I also grew up on a council estate. Um, I grew up in a, a small place called Caddishead which is part of Greater Manchester. Um, I went to a local primary school, a local comprehensive high school. Um, I would say I was probably more academic. Mm, definitely. So um, I've got a degree in diagnostic radiography. I've got three postgrad certificates, a postgrad diploma, a master's degree, and I'm currently studying for another postgrad certificate. Um, I do stuff just for a laugh as well. So I've got NVQ one and two in hairdressing that I did at the weekend just for entertainment for my own personal gain. Clinical hypnosis. Yeah, clinical diploma in clinical hypnosis. You started to learn to fly. Oh yeah, yeah, I did start to learn to fly. I did quite a few lessons. Um, but where I used to do my lessons, it was like a, a grass mm -hmm. runway and the lessons kept getting cancelled. It's quite frustrating because I'd get up early, I'd go and then they'd get cancelled. So, And then I started to feel a little bit unsafe because it was like a, a single engine. Um, fixed wing microlight, um, and then I realised just how vulnerable you were. I think as I got older as well, you start to fear things more. Yeah, and how did we meet? Uh, we actually met on a dating website. Yeah. Um, many many years ago. Yeah, we and chatted we... for about five hours. Yeah. Um, just we had our first date at Starbucks, Starbucks in the Trafford Centre. Yeah, and yeah. again we just we had two coffees and chatted for about five hours, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, so um, we met in 2000. Yes, we did together 20 years. And we had our civil partnership in 2011. Yeah. Um, and also from John and Dean, can Anthony work at different health facilities to allow guy, you guys more flexibility to travel the cut? Um, possibly that will be the case eventually. Um, currently I work at mainly one site I do flip between but it's all based in one area um, I'm hoping like I said to reduce my hours and then I think eventually um, I'm either going to give up and just do the occasional locum job that will then enable us to cruise around because I can go to where the work is that that was a good question they're good questions from John and Dean thanks um, Robin Nuragat, I hope I said that right. So happy for that your art for you that your art is selling so well. Do you ever sell your original drawings or just keep them for yourself? Uh, yeah, I do. I usually do an original piece that I take copies of and sell as prints, but then I sell the original. And but I've got no originals for sale because they do get snapped up pretty quickly, don't yeah. they? Which is nice. And there's quite a few people that seem to be collecting my art as well. So Where are you off? the minute an originals is probably too warm. <laughs> Oh, that's Dexter snoring if you wonder what the background noise was. I oh, can see you've got your jammers on there. Oh yeah, sorry, my Star Wars jammers. <laughs> um, so that was from Robin. Yeah, thanks Robin. Leslie Silverstone, my question for Anthony. How do you like cooking in such a small space? And has it altered your menu? Um, I don't find the space that restricted, to be honest. Um, I've invested in two... Um, cast iron pots that I use on this on the stove um, I'd say my menu is pretty similar Would you? yeah yeah cook pretty much the same thing I just don't batch cook which is a bit frustrating I <laughs> Dexter's climbed under the dinette because it's the coolest <laughs> place on the boat but there's a bag under there and he's just jumping on top of it sorry about the noise um, thanks uh, Carol Donkin uh, my question is in your experience on getting your new build would you have the cassette toilet fit and then change to composting toilet later or just go for a composting toilet straight from the outset? Sorry to get straight in there with the toilet question. It just had to be done. Well, that's easy, isn't it? Well, no, it's not because, funny enough, we initially asked Rob hmm. whether he would plumb in case we changed our mind. Yeah. And Rob was like under the um, thinking that if you've got more plumbing, there's more things to go wrong. It's more likely to leak. And it's so, easy enough to fit afterwards. Yeah, anyway, like it? post fit if wanted to do that. However, 
I can't imagine we would ever want to get rid of the compost soil. It's, no. It does exactly what it is. It, they claimed it would do. There's definitely no smell. I was really sceptical, but, but there really isn't. No. Um, it's really easy to empty. Um, and it, It's better when you're on yeah. the cut as well, because you're not using water. Mm. Um, that was our worry, that if we're out on the cut in winter and it was icy and we didn't want to move the boat... Um, you know, hopefully we'd have enough drinking water, uh, but you know, it, we don't want to be using the toilet more. Yeah. And yeah, and, and also, we know loads of boaters that have got new boats and old boats, and they've changed to a compost toilet and said it's the best thing they've done. Yeah. Pat and Eileen are a good example, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so thanks for that question, Becky. Uh, Susan McCarthy. Hi guys, due to COVID and lockdown, you haven't been able to cruise the cut. What canals are you most looking forward to travelling on? Good question. Me personally, the Peak District, is the Peak Forest? Peak Forest. Peak Forest, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm looking forward. It looks Not the peak absolutely District. stunning. When we've seen other YouTubers um, show that, it just looks amazing. I definitely want to do the Clangochlin. Yeah. Because um, I want, really want to do the... Ponce Sicily aqueducts. I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly. Yeah, uh, it's think. a bit shameful because I do have Welsh relatives. Um, Christine Cassidy Kennedy has also said, "How long have we been together?" So yeah. we've said that twenty, 20 years. years. What I did forget to say is Paul was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar when I met him. <laughs> I wasn't. Uh, you may have all those diplomas, <laughs> but I could make a great <laughs> balloon dog. Answer. <laughs> if anybody wants a balloon dog, let me know. Yeah. Uh, DJ Soul, is there much noise from the adjacent boats in the marina? And I was curious to keep, if you have to keep your voices down after a certain time at night. Also, do you feel cramped living so close to other people? And can I answer this first? Go on. Uh, I was really surprised, actually, that when I saw how close the boats were, I thought there'd be a lot of noise and we'd be tiptoeing around the boat. But I think because most boats are stainless steel, We've got a, a surround sound bar, haven't we? Yeah. Um, a sound bar that can be pretty loud. And we like watching our films in the evening. And the, after a couple of nights, I said to Anthony, turn the TV on and turn the sound up and I'll go outside. And I was really surprised. You couldn't hear anything at all. So we were sort of tiptoeing around. We didn't need to. We don't hear much at all from our neighbours, do we? Yeah. And myself, because I'm going back up. Oh. oh. I've cooled down now. Oh. Dex is trying to push me off camera here. Uh, he is a star. Yeah, he is. <laughs> because I work from the boat and I'm on the boat most of the time in the daytime, I just can't believe how quiet it is on the marina. There's a train line nearby and I thought that would bother me. And I really, I, we quite like the train, don't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think? Well, because you've waffled on so much, I can't yeah. actually remember the question. <laughs> <laughs> About noise from the boat and do you feel cramped on the marina? No, um, I think it's nice because, especially for you, because when I'm at work, you've mm. got people you can say chat hello to. to and have a chat to, and it's it's really sociable, Marina, isn't it? And the people are lovely. Mm. We've got to know some really nice people. Um, this side of us is the the boat's empty anyway. They mm. they left it there and they're waiting to do some work on it after <laughs> tier three restrictions are lifted. Um, We've just got lovely neighbours, haven't we? I was yeah. putting the Christmas lights up today and people were out filling the boats with water and chatting. I, it's just a really nice community spirit. Everybody, and you know, it sounds like a cliche, but everybody on the marina really is lovely. I think everyone's been, everyone's just respectful anyway. So, you know, we, we even when we lived in the house, we we're always conscious that it was a semi detached, so we didn't want to make too much noise after a certain mm. time. And I think we've just carried that onto the boat, really. Mm. So, you know, after a certain time, we wouldn't have music. Well, not we have music on loud anyway, but we wouldn't, mm. you know, we would reduce the volume of the TV and stuff, as we would have done in the house. So yeah. I don't feel like we're any extra restricted because no, we're on a boat. So. Oh, and that reminds me that we forgot to answer the earlier question that what do the, how do we feel as two gay men living together on a narrow boat? And everyone's just been amazing, haven't they? Even like the fishermen when we're walking down the canal have spotted our boat in different places when we're out and about and chatted to us about the yeah. boat. Um, and I everyone on the marine has been, been yeah, fine. Well, I think it's just, it's the same as any any living Yeah, if you lived on an estate, situation, an estate so would be the same. You will yeah. always get 
bigoted people who were, you know, whatever way they're bigoted. So you will get people who are homophobic, mm -hmm. racist, or whatever. You will, you know, you're always going to get people like that in, in all walks of life. Well, they're a, mini they're a minority, um, aren't they? Well, thankfully mm -hmm. nowadays it, it's a minority. Mm -hmm. um, we've been quite fortunate. We haven't really ever experienced anything while we, certainly while we've been on the boat. No. Um, everyone's, you know, like yeah. Paul said, everyone's been really nice. Yeah. I think it's easier now than it used to be. Yeah, I guess so. Well, it's, I think, I think the advent of social media and the internet and information out there and, you know, it's, it's become more acceptable. More than norm, I suppose. It's just like... Yeah, I mean, we've got nephews and nieces and they don't think anything of it. I, mean, I remember your niece saying, oh, do you live with Uncle Anthony? And like, we'd only been together a short time. She was only about six at yeah. the time, wasn't she? So, yeah, yeah. it's fine. Um, Pauline Higgins uh, from Australia. Uh, any idea roughly how long it takes to buy a narrowboat? Worried that as we look on boat sales and the ones we're interested in, especially 57 feet, seem to be the most popular and sell really quickly. We sort of answered this earlier, didn't we? That Yeah, I, I, so I get why the 57 feet ones go quickly because yeah. 57 foot will go through all of the locks in all, on, on the network. So I think that's what people have in mind. 60 foot at a push, but 57 foot mm. will definitely go through all the locks on the canal networks. Mm. Um, and thank Process. goodness, really, sorry to interrupt, that we got the advice that we did because we were just looking at 70 feet bolts, weren't we, to start Yeah, we just thought the bigger the boat, the, the more space we'll have, not it. actually yeah. realising until we've done a bit more research. Mm. Um, I think they will struggle in that, you know, they're right, they see a boat, like we said before, and it just goes really quickly. I don't um, think they'll have any trouble selling it, though. That's the good thing. If they can get a boat, I don't think they'll have any trouble selling no, it. No, I think it's it. quite a buoyant market at the minute. Yeah. Um, Coming from Australia, buying a boat, probably best getting in touch with Narrowboat Chef, mm -hmm. Maggie and Ryan, because yeah. they're Australian, they've done exactly that, yeah. so they might, might be able to shed a bit more light on for you. Um, and also from the same person, Pauline Higgins, having lived on a narrowboat, can you advise what's most important for comfort and why? Um, a nice comfy sofa, because we spend most of our time on the sofa. Yeah. Um, um, relaxing the a evening. full wine rack. A full wine rack, definitely. definitely. Um, nice, nice comfy mattress. I'd say a hot water bottle. You, Anthony likes a no, cold I bed. I like getting into cold bed. I like a warm bed, even if it's just for my feet. So uh, a hot water bottle, because it gets so warm on a boat, you just don't have the central heating on. The fire's lit now, and it must be about 28 Celsius in here. Uh, so we usually have the duck hatch open in the evening. Um, so the bedroom can get cool at night. So yeah, a hot water bottle's nice, I think. Yeah, no, it's just soft. It's so soft. <laughs> um, what's most important for comfortable living and why? Um, okay. A dog. A dog, yeah. But then they're only going to be over for a year, aren't they? Yeah. Um, definitely think about the mattress you buy. Um, definitely think about the sofa. So we went for a specific modular build sofa, so it could be built on the boat and it's like a normal sofa rather than a sofa bed. With storage inside. Uh, it's got storage inside, which is really important. Um, things to put your stuff on as well, it needs to be a home, so you know we bought a bookcase and yeah. it actually, we're quite fortunate, it matches the boat. Yeah. Um, so we can put some of our books on there, um, nice lighting. Yeah. So Things that make it homely as well, because it can be quite stark on a boat, especially if it was an ex-hire boat. Some nice lamps. Um, we've got these little lights that we've got up in the ceiling. Uh, just little touches and, you know, a couple of pictures from the house that makes it feel more homely. We wish we'd kept our small Christmas tree. Yeah. We gave that away to a charity shop, I think. And we wish we'd kept that, because we got quite attached to that little tree, didn't we? We'd had it for so long. And, and it would have been nice on, Yeah, it would have been <laughs> fine on the boat. And we've still got storage on the boat. And I think, have we got another question? Yeah, sorry. John Foley, those muddy towpaths, we are touring caravanners and we all we always have to pay on caravan sites about £22 a night. How does that compare to a marina? So Paul and I had a bit of a 
debate about this the other day because Paul thought the marina was more expensive than than it is. Than it is. Um, I was surprised how Paul's stupid. not to be trusted looking after the finances. I am. So I'm I had quicker. a look the other day and um, I think what does it work out? Just under two hundred pounds a month, and then you've got your coal, gas, and electricity. And somebody else asked about electricity. We, we found don't seem to be using a lot, but I think that's because most of the stuff on here is twelve. Most of the stuff we use every day, like the lighting, it's twelve volts, so it's like LED lights. Um, a lot of the stuff we have plugged in is USB. Mm. Um, the main draw and power is the coffee machine, probably the TV and the soundbar, and the my Mac computer. computer, I think, when I'm editing. Um, but apart from that, we, we're very I think we've conscious spent, about... Yeah, we probably spent about £20 on in, electricity in a month. In a month. At the most. Yeah, so we've been quite surprised how little we've used electricity. Yeah. We've got the washing machine and then we use the dryer. I think if we had a tumble dryer on board, if we had room for it, that would use a lot of electricity. Yeah. Um, the boat builders laughed because because we've not been able to cruise because of the lockdown situation, the fact that we decided to winter up in a marina, he's actually said that we've probably spent more on red wine than we have on diesel. Yeah, which is probably have. true. Definitely in the first eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, so that's all our questions. Thank you so much for sending in the questions. Yeah. If we have missed your question, we'll try and answer it on a future vlog. Uh, just to point out as well, and just to clarify, that on last week's vlog, uh, I said I was worried that we'd run out of things to talk about and didn't know how long we could continue with the channel. That was just for this year. We do want to continue next year, don't we? Well, no, I just gave you a bit of a shake and told <laughs> you to pull yourself together. Because there's loads of stuff that people still want to know about, mm. like your artwork. People have asked, can you yeah. do like a time lapse of your drawings? Which yeah, I, I think want it'd to be that. really good. I'd like to see that, to be fair. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd have to fasten it down on the table and keep it there. So, yeah, um, that's something I can do. People have asked if I could do a magic trick maybe before Christmas. I may perform a magic trick. We've had some really lovely comments from people said, oh, please don't stop doing YouTube. Well, I think people get it, don't they? It? Which yeah. is really nice that we're not... It's about... It's not about cruising and showing our cruises along the canal and opening a lock. And we like to... Show the nature and all the things that appeal to us about yeah. being on a narrowboat so, near the canals. We hope that the stuff that appeals to us also appeals to the people that watch the mm. vlog. And I guess it must do, otherwise you, you guys wouldn't be watching it. Mm. So, yeah, thank you very much for all your lovely comments last week. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for all your questions. And that's it for this week. Have we got anything to add? I'm sure we'll speak to you before Christmas, but we hope that December's a good month for yeah. you. And, you know, it, I think the situation in Australia is... Well, Amazing, they've done really well, haven't they? Yeah, and hopefully... Yeah. The well, with the advent of the, of the vaccine, hopefully things are going to improve. Yeah. Um, I will probably be one of the first to have it due to my job. So, yeah, the NHS staff are going to be guinea pigs first, I guess. Yeah. Um, which is a good thing, because, obviously, we want to be safe and want to be safe for our patients. And um, thank you so much for the regular comments. <laughs> it's, it's dead nice to see familiar f names coming up. Um, it's nice getting to know you guys as, as us trying to share bits of our life as well yeah so from myself from anthony and dexter thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you next week bye for now take care bye bye